welcome to the channel so this is going to be a two-part video tutorial on building a tabletop wood-fired pizza oven so a little bit of background I'm having a clear out of the shed and also things that are lying around the garden Rather than take them to the recycle centre, I'm going to see if I can use some of those to make a tabletop wood-fired pizza oven. So most of the things I'm going to be using are scrap. So the way I would look at this video is have a look at the materials I'm using. And obviously there are better materials out there if you want to have a go at the project yourself. Bit of background as far as who I am. So I've been building pizza ovens now for about three or four years. Um, I've built, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13 pizza ovens for friends and family. There are literally pizza ovens dotted all around the, uh, the garden at the moment, either fully built one, like the one behind me, which is the first one I ever built, uh, and that's been used probably for maybe two to 200, 250 fires, uh, and it's still going strong or there are shells uh, of pizza ovens around the garden waiting for uh, family members to find space in the garden so I can uh, build them a, a really decent oven. So I've been doing this a long time, I'm self-taught, got no formal training in uh, concrete or anything like that, uh, but I have learnt a hell of a lot over the last four years. What I'm going to do today is I've found a almost like a park construction uh, that I used as a test bed for thermal insulation, that type of thing, so I could learn about the uh, pizza oven qualities, the, the best things to use when I first started this, as I said, almost four years ago. I was going to throw that out today, but I think I can make a tabletop uh, pizza oven with it, and that's basically what we're doing today. So a quick tour, and this is the first pizza oven that I ever built. So it's not brick, it's actually a vermiculite concrete construction and these are handmade brick slips or brick tiles which I made. The video build series for this construction is on my cookery channel which is Damalat, D-A then M-A-L-A-T. I used to put everything on there so cookery videos and build videos. Now I've got a separate DIY channel, uh, Man Cave Projects all future DIY builds will be on that channel which is a channel that this video is on but if you want to go over to Demalat have a look at this build series which is quite extensive I think there's about nine videos in that build series I'll put a link in the description below the video so as I said this has been used a lot of times very successfully as well it's got you might not be able to see because it's quite dark but it's got quite a few battle scars cracks but it still works perfectly so this is just one of the the um, pizza ovens that are lying around the garden so this is a new design I'm going to see how this works so this is going in a, a family member's garden once I've built the, or once they're ready for it, and I've built the um, plinth for it to go on. And we're going to test this quite extensively, and if this works, then this might become the new design. I'll do a, a build video on this particular design, as I said, if it works, and that will go on this channel, so Man Cave Projects. So please subscribe to the channel. There are going to be a lot more pizza oven related builds on the channel so basically what the idea behind this is that we have a thick lower part of the vermiculite concrete that will retain all the heat on here we'll go a um, ceramic blanket and then a cap over the top of uh, vermiculite concrete again so I want to show roughly the materials I'm going to use for this build project. This is a project that I'm going to make up as I go along. This probably isn't going to be the definitive list of products I'm going to need. So I'm not just saying it so you'll watch the whole video, but I think you will need to watch this video in its entirety because I may change one or two things as I go through. So the basis for it is this. This was the test bed that I used just to see the thermal qualities. In there is two thermalite 
concrete blocks which are just at the back of the garden and it's basically just a box a wooden box around it on legs we're going to use this as the basis i'm going to deconstruct this because we need to make some um, alterations to it and the basic principle is that the thermalite concrete block will act as a fantastic insulator for the base of the um, pizza oven then going to build a collapsible structure in order to mold the concrete to and then once the concrete sets we can then get rid of this sort of cardboard structure and what I'm going to use is two um, old uh, hanging basket liners and I think these are 14, uh, 14 inch liners so obviously these will go into the tip I'm going to use these and what I'm going to do with these is get it back into some form of shape at the back of this I've had to go and buy uh, another concrete block so that will sit at the back make a nice shape out of that and basically what it is this is where we'll be cooking on and then the fire will be pushed to the back so we need a chamber at the back of the pizza oven to retain the fire otherwise the fire will be too close to the pizza and this edge will just burn too quickly so I think what I'm going to do is construct this in some way and then cut this up to form that chamber at the back that's the idea anyway it's going to sit in a box on um, wooden legs so it's a nice tabletop feature I've got a scrap piece of OSB which was used obviously for this I'm going to continue using that that is not the material to use it's got a lot of um, splinters in there so if you're doing this from scratch and you haven't got any of the materials I would go and buy some half inch marine ply um, it, it'll be expensive but I think that'll do really well obviously if this actually works so that's going to be, become the uh, platform the wood I used for the legs is just uh, studded wall um, wood which I think is about 64 mil by 36 mil something like that and that's just obviously just created legs there is a leg in the center uh, and that was just to support the weight for the vermiculite concrete I've got some vermiculite uh, left over because this is such a small project I would suggest if you haven't got any vermiculite or perlite it doesn't matter which one you use go to a horticultural centre or a uh, garden centre and purchase a small bag of perlite or vermiculite that'll be the fine grade which is perfect for this job and it'll be in a quantity maybe 10 or 20 litres that uh, I think you'll have enough for this rather than buy a, a, a huge bag because I've got some I'm going to be using a little bit of uh, kiln dried sand so either kiln dried sand or play sand uh, both are high silica content which is ideal for um, heat resistant concrete I've got some extra rapid cement left over I'm hoping that's okay um, if you're watching the video then it is okay this is a um, this is a crux if, if this has actually started to go off or it's unusable I won't be doing this project so obviously I don't want to spend too much on it so extra rapid cement ideal because it's high calcium aluminate content and that's what you need for um, heat resistant concrete when this is rebagged and remarketed as um, refractory cement it's three times the price so this is almost identical very similar calcium aluminate um, content to refractory cement so I'm going to be using some of that as well and I'll go through the ratios uh, as we do the build that I think is about it as I said if anything changes we'll see that through the video so hopefully by the end we'll have a comprehensive video build um, and if you want to try it hopefully you'll be able to do it yourself so the other thing I'm going to use is this pizza stone which I've found pizza stone actually came with the gas barbecue but it's been useless because placing it onto the gas barbecue you put the pizza on there once it's hot and normally the pizza will burn underneath and um, won't cook properly on the top 
so I hardly ever used it so I'm going to be using this and I think this is a 16 inch uh, pizza stone so we're going to use that as the um, floor for our pizza oven so we get a nice floor finish to cook the pizza on. So first thing we need to do with our sheet material is create a box and that box should be big enough so that we can have two of the Thermalite concrete blocks in this orientation and then one to create that fire chamber at the back in that orientation. So we're going to need it obviously that long and then what I'm going to do is shape this back concrete block sort of curved that sort of shape and then this will be the nice chamber where we'll push the fire back to so that's basically what I'm going to do now just build that box uh, and sit these back inside so let me just show you where I'm up to this is going to be the orientation of the blocks for the base I've scribed a an arc using a pencil an old washing up bowl to get that arc in the back so let me just show you so this is where the pizza stone is going to go so imagine this is the entrance to the pizza oven this part as I said before allows us to create a chamber at the back where the fire so the fire will start here to warm up the pizza stone we'll then push the fire back into this chamber and that allows us uh, the full pizza stone to um, to cook on so the next thing to do is I want to cut this shape out and what I'm going to use is a very old saw which I was going to throw out but I kept for this type of thing so a hand saw will definitely cut through this block don't use your best hand saw because it won't be fit for anything else really once you've cut through um, thermalite concrete block with it so I'm just going to make a series of cuts and then round that off with a rough file So let me show you where I'm up to. So I've marked out and cut this uh, thermalite block into a curve. So this is the back of the um, pizza oven. Placed all three blocks onto the sheet material, the OSB, drew around that and cut that out. So we've got that as well. Going to be cutting 10 centimeter strips of OSB to go around the outside to uh, encase everything in. The curved bit at the back, I've already cut that piece and every centimetre and a half I've used the hand saw and just gone halfway through. Those cuts are going to go on the inside and that, that will allow me to bend this around and put that in shape hopefully without it um, breaking. I've just been out, wasn't part of the original plan, but I've just been out and bought some um, silicone adhesive. So Stixol is a really, really good product. Use it all the time where I need uh, a silicone adhesive. Fantastic kit. I'm going to use that to glue the um, Thermalite blocks in place and also to glue this surround in place. I'm also going to screw from underneath into the surround to make sure it's uh, fastened into place really well. Before I glue these Thermalite block in place onto the base plate, I'm going to be using the wooden legs of the original one and cut a couple more. So these are 10 cent centimetre long blocks. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, one in the centre, five, and one at the back, six. I'm going to need six in total. Put those in first and then glue everything in place. Hope that makes sense. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. So we've got our wooden base with the legs on. So the Thermalite concrete block is going to be more than thick enough to shield this basic wooden base from the heat of the fire. Take our stick saw. I'm 
and just put some on the base to keep our thermite block in place. on so that's our base done uh, I even found some what are called multi-fix screws in the shed, just found a handful of those so I've added those to the uh, wood surround just to give it some extra strength. doesn't really matter if you don't have any of those, um, I wouldn't have bothered if I hadn't have, uh, found some. So the next step is, and I think I'd started doing it a while ago, so next step is to take our uh, piece of stone, score around it, obviously in this in this front part of the base, and then I'm going to chip away at the thermalite block and sink that until it comes flush with the block. Otherwise, if it stays like that, we push the fire to the back and then trying to clean it afterwards, it's going to be a bit of a pain. So two ways you can um, take out the thermalite block which is quite soft one is with an old wood chisel or the other one even better if you've got a multi-tool with a um, scraper attachment that'll uh, take that out quite easily so once I've done the uh, channeling out and dropped the pizza stone into this thermalite block we'll come back and I'll show you the next step so we've got our pizza stone inset now into this thermal block. That was quite messy to tell you the truth, but it wasn't difficult to do. Next thing to do is we're going to take the um, hanging basket liners and develop this mold over the top so we can start to concrete. So this is where we are with our form. So I've used those two um, hanging basket liners and then I decided to bring this part as far forward as possible so I needed something extra on the back so what I've used is everything from spare pieces of bubble wrap to some foam packaging it's not the prettiest thing in the world but so this is the chamber at the back where the fire is going to go so the next step is I'm going to Fasten this down on the inside with sellotape, just to try and hold it in place if I can. And then mix the vermiculite concrete and cover the, um, the outside. So I'm ready to apply the concrete now. I would advise that you wear a glove. I'm going to be applying it by hand. Easy, that's the easiest way to do it. And I advise that you wear a glove. The ratios are five vermiculite, one cement, one sand and you want it a nice consistency so not too dry you won't be able to spread it if it's too dry uh, but obviously not too wet so just a nice consistency where you can apply it um, quite freely but it will actually stay in place if it's too wet it won't do that so that's what i'm going to do now i will find out exactly how much uh, vermiculite is needed at the end of the um the process so I'll put that at the end of the video okay so that's the structure covered however I've come across a couple of problems 
second one is as you can see the weight of the concrete was pushing the front down so I've had to put two blocks in and I've already noticed an issue at the side where this is bellowing out and I think that is because there's too much downward force with the concrete so in hindsight if I ever did this again I'd do exactly the same as I've done now but I would get some more of this packaging and place it in the centre to stop that from pushing down. Apart from that it's a really easy process using your hand to uh, put the vermiculite concrete on. So the last job to do just as the concrete has started to set I've used this old spam tin, cut the bottom off, off it, pushed it into the uh, concrete and then just taken the concrete out of the inside to create a chimney. Just thought this was a, a much easier way to do it than actually make a form and concrete up the side for the form. Just think this is a, for this particular project, just seemed the easiest thing to do. So when the concrete sets, that'll just be firmly in place. If you don't like the printing, uh, whether you use this or a baked bean tin, doesn't have to be this shape. Uh, the uh, chimney can be round. If you don't like the printing on the front, just spray it black with some heat resistant black spray paint.